Today is March 27th, 2023, and this week there were 68 reported cases of COVID-19 in Mecklenburg County, which shows a 39% decrease over the last two weeks. Therefore, each subject is comfortable not to wear a mask. Okay, so first, where is home for you right now? It's right here in Charlotte, North Carolina. So are you in the city or one I am, I am on Harris Boulevard, oh. to be actually, off of Harris Boulevard. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, that's pretty close. And then where were you born? Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, that's a, definitely a change in the city. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been in Charlotte? For over 20 years now. Yeah. Yeah, my mom's been here for about 30, so she's yeah. transplant from West Virginia. Okay. Describe your experience during the last two years and more of the COVID-19 pandemic. I know that's a big question. Um, last two years. I wasn't I wasn't here for one of those those years. Um I actually um was at uh another facility in Davidson and it was uh really strict to get in. And uh we were in a lockdown facility. So a lot of people couldn't get in. We had to take um temperatures every day, constantly wear masks. Plus um the floors that we were serving to the patients. They were on lockdown, so they couldn't come down. So it kind of hindered our job a little bit too on getting them fresh food, so, yeah. What do you remember of the early days and what did you do during lockdown? Well, I stayed, tried to stay patient and positive as much as uh, played a lot of games <laughs> and tried not to overeat. <laughs> that was definitely yeah. a big part of it. Yeah, that was, I mean, the family definitely got closer because we spent a lot more time together than usual. So, yeah, we learned some new things about each other as well. So, yeah, there was nowhere to go. Yeah, there was nowhere to Stuff go. Yeah. Your friendships or family relationships changed during the pandemic. I know you just started saying something about that. So, if you want to describe some more of that example. Yeah, they actually did change. Um, uh, me, me and my daughter had a. Um, a better understanding of each other. I understood why she tries to do the things that she does and she understood why I'm so hard on her as well, you know? So now she could see it. She's older now, but now she could see it. And uh, me and my lady, I mean, we are, we've always been close. So, I mean, we even got closer, yeah, right. you know? We started doing little, uh, trying to make, um do little things for each other, you yeah, know? Right. So, yeah. yeah right. And a lot of new, a lot of new recipes. Yeah. A lot of new yeah, recipes. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that was a good thing. Yeah, for sure. I know we went on a lot of family walks. Oh yeah. It was really weird at first. And I was like, eh, we don't do this. I know. <laughs> was there a time you stepped in to help someone affected by COVID-19? And I know you said you worked with the hospital as well. Um. I believe we try to help someone every day when we were at the hospital, uh, be it um, get them their food while it's nice and hot or um, change something for them. Um, helping help, helping the nurses under, understand what they're going through as far as them not being able to come downstairs and stuff like that, just trying to ease the, ease everything that was going on. You know, people, <clears throat> we were already in a lockdown facility and now, now they can't actually come downstairs and get food too. So it made it worse. So uh, we, we had, um we would send um, coloring books up. Yeah. You know, it's a behavioral, it was a behavioral unit. So we would send coloring books up, you know, on their trays and, um, Send different little things like that. We would, um, for the people's birthday, we would do a special cookie or something like that uh, for that person. And so just trying to, you know, break the monotony. And t we were taking, um, we are taking iced tea and, and um, cookies to the nurses to say, hey, we're here with you. Yeah. You know, just to let them know that we're here with them too. So they're not going through it alone. Did you have the experience where you had to quarantine separately from your family or was it mostly just with your family? No, I didn't have anything I had to do separately. Um, uh, my nephew, uh, 
we were in between moving to another place at the time. So I stayed with my nephew for like a month and his, um, his fiance got sick. So she basically had to quarantine herself from us. Yeah. 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 So we went through it a little bit, but not, you know, yeah. too bad. Did you ever get COVID during like the peak of Oh, when it first came out, I know I had it. Mm -hmm. And this is before everybody was like, right, yeah. uh, uh, I got to take a test. I got to do this. Right. No, we went, I was in the office right down here on Randolph. Mm -hmm. And it was three of us in that office hacking like no yeah. tomorrow and sweating mm -hmm. like crazy. Yeah. So I know for sure it was not a normal cold but we went to work and like it was I don't know, I'm just feeling a little other way we still went to work we still fought through it I mean it was herbal tea going everywhere <laughs> but you know but I mean we didn't know yeah we didn't know we didn't, at first we didn't know you know it was oh go get a test it wasn't the swab and to Queens for my accepted students day on February 14th, 2020. Mm -hmm. So that was a super spreader event. We all probably shouldn't have been doing that, but we mm -hmm. didn't know not to do that yet. So, and I didn't no. get COVID until last year on Easter. So yeah. this time. So I we didn't know. to dodge it for three years. You know. Yeah, we didn't know. And yeah. I think I may, um, I know I caught it the first time and then I went and got a test. I didn't, I didn't have it. I felt like I had it, but I didn't have it. I was like, yeah, that's the only thing. I this, know. Something's not right. Right. That happened to my sister this summer. She, my whole family had it. She never tested positive, but she felt like she had COVID. Yeah, this, it's... So it's a little yikes. Stuff. I don't, I don't, it's a lot of gray areas with this COVID. So yeah. it's a lot of stuff they're not telling us to. Yeah, exactly. So in public, what was it like going out? Did you wear... You said, I know you mentioned you said you wore a mask before we started. Did you ever wear gloves or anything like that? Or? No gloves, just just a mask. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> just watch my surrounding. Plenty of hand sanitizer. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's about it. Um, you know, just I a remember, mask and hand sanitizer. I remember hand sanitizer used to smell like booze for a little while. Yeah. Because they like yeah. ran out of all the normal yeah. stuff. And everything they started there. giving you the real deal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like rum, and I was like, oh. Uh, the one, the one in Walgreens definitely smells oh, like that. Yeah. My mom would buy me a thing before I went to school, and I was like, I don't want to. I'm not going to use it. Yeah, I, I don't know what they. I don't know what they were putting in that oh, one. Yeah. There. Mm. It was probably ash. It probably was because they out. ran out of. They ran out of the, yeah. the other stuff. Yep. Has the pandemic? Has the pandemic changed your normal routines? No. No. Um. I work. I've been working in healthcare, and healthcare and food and like that. So <clears throat> I clean it. I clean in practices, and 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 making sure your hands are washed and stuff like that. It's like a, a yeah, normal right. routine. It's like a normal routine to us. Right. Um, it it changed. It did change a little bit because of the, uh, COVID. Uh, they actually came out with a a, a new um, sanitizer. So uh, you don't you don't have to actually use the soapy water and then sanitize. Yeah. It does everything. Wow, that's really efficient. Yeah, so you have that one sanitizer that does it. I mean, you could still use the soapy water, but that one sanitizer exactly. does everything. Yeah. It cleans, it sanitizes the whole nine. Yeah. So that that change mm -hmm. as far as um, a routine or what have you like that. But other than that. I mean, like I just went day to day, just being careful. Yeah. Nothing, nothing special. No. And what are some challenges you faced during the pandemic? Um, <laughs> that six feet crap. Yeah. And I'm not gonna call it crap because it helped, but no one was staying away from yeah. six feet like we're supposed to. Yeah. You know. I mean, it helped, it helped in the, again, when I'm working at Hope, because it helped the people that were coming to get the food. 
to stay six feet apart. Because at some point they started letting people come back downstairs and all that and stuff. They loosened up a little bit. And then when that happened, we had to have those little, those, um, those, um, the, the circles yeah. six feet apart from, and yeah. stand on the circle and then move and then tell somebody. So that helped kind of a little bit, you know, but, uh, I mean, it, it wasn't bad. It helped, you know, I, like I said, this the whole deal was like a big gray area to a lot of people there. Oh, yeah. And I think we're still learning. You know, will it be another one? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I think so. So, I mean, at least we're a little bit more prepared now. Yeah. Hopefully. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, this is the end. Yeah. So I remember it locked down almost three years ago, like a couple days ago. And we were all just like, well, is this the end? Like, are we about to have an apocalypse? Yeah. What's going to happen? Yeah. Is be like contagion the movie? But mm -hmm. it, I, it could have been a lot worse. It wasn't good. No, it was not good at but all. It definitely, we were able to respond to a certain degree, which I think helped a lot. Mm -hmm. Obviously, our public health system needs a lot of work, but we were able to help some people. Yeah. So, but hopefully next time, like you said, we'll uh, hopefully. do better and better. But when I'm here and we're gonna have another one, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, you never know. Let's see. So, what are some good things you've learned from your experience during the pandemic? Um, people can pull together when when needed. Mm -hmm. You know, they always talk about we're so divided as a people, and people don't stick together. And when that pandemic came, you saw people stick together. You know, it didn't matter where you were from, what color you were, what, you know, what you call yourself or what have you like that. But people stuck together because yeah. we had one common cause and that was for us to stay safe. Okay. You know, yeah. so people were helping out other people. People were like uh, being mindful of that, the next person. Uh, and you had to rule people too that someone would cough and they would just go out of their mind. Oh, yeah. this person coughed and... Well, uh, if you keep a mask on for 10 hours a day, you're going to cough, too, at some point, right. you know? So, yeah. you know, think about that. Yeah. You don't necessarily... And some people have smoker's cough, exactly. you know? And some people have allergies. You don't know why they're coughing. So that, I thought those days were... And I'm not going to lie. I would look when someone coughed like that, too, during that yeah. time. Like, oh, so he's <laughs> coughing. Exactly. Uh, it's like, oh, okay. But not to be rude about it and you know, oh that person's you know not to be like that with them right it's just be like hey that person is going through the same thing i'm going through yeah so let me just think about would i want that no um i don't think i would want right. to feel like that with somebody calling me out like that right you know and what was the process like transitioning over time as restrictions have come and gone and influx and outflows? relief yeah Right. We can do go there again. Um, we can go to a basketball game. Thank God. I was going crazy. I just, yeah. I'm a, I'm a sports fanatic. Yeah, that's a big thing. That uh, and watching the game and not seeing the crowd, I'm like, that was weird. Are they really gonna put the digital at somebody's home? Watching this game and feed in the crowd noise. Very strange. I'm not feeling it. Yeah. I'm not feeling it's it. It's an uncanny valley. Right? Yeah, I'm like, come on. I'm not right. good. I'm good. I, I don't want to watch it. So it, um, we're, it'll never be normal again, but getting back to so-called normal right. was good. Yeah. I felt, I felt like we made some progression in that. So, um, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Were you at Queens when they were really strict here? No. Or? I was at Atrium still. Right. I only been at Queens now. Um, work. I'll be here a year this August. Yeah. September, yeah. somewhere now. When we first started here, I was a freshman in 2020, fall 2020. We were completely online. And then when we came back, it was everything was shut down. Um, you had to wear a mask inside, outside. You could not hang out with people you didn't know. Mm. None of that. So all of it was just, it was 
it was just sad. It was like, I can't hang out with anybody. I have to be friends with the people I live with because there's no one else. So it was, yeah, yeah I'm glad that Queens has made, been able to make an educated decision to thank God. Because at this yeah. point, I think if we're going to get COVID because athletes especially are always together. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Point, and they're constantly traveling. Handle, yeah. We know how to handle it now. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't cut down the experiences yeah. as much. And then, is there anything else you'd like to share about your COVID experience that you haven't already covered? I thought I lost. I, I thought I lost a friend, but um, I didn't. And it hit. It, it hit home with my uh, my wife's cousin. He got it real bad, and it was kind of touch and go for him. But he came through. He was good. He's good. But it was, yeah. yeah. So I kind of, um, it got real personal. Yeah. Then when it touches yeah. in your own house, you know, it's not particularly in my house, but, but still, yeah. we're still cool. We're yeah, cl- we're cl- that true. close enough where, yeah. 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 So I mean, yeah, yeah. That's what hit me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, before we finish up, I want to go over the hand map activity really quick. Okay. So you can just share generally what are some of the things that you put that you'd like to highlight, or you don't have to share anything you're not comfortable with, but if there's anything in particular you'd like to highlight or share a story with, then feel free to. Uh, okay. Uh... Let me see. Any one of them, anywhere? Yeah, anything you'd like to share that stands out to you. You can do a couple things if you'd like to. I'll share this one. Okay. Being a stand-up person. I, I take pride in keeping my word and treating people a certain way, no matter what. Just, I, I, I guess that's how we got the interview today because I think I always treated you a certain way when you came yeah. over to the cab. Sure. I mean, to the market. Yeah. Make and I try, cheese. right? And I and I try to treat everybody that came over there mm-hmm. the same exact way. Right. Yeah. And I wanted to I, like when I asked them a question about themselves, I genuinely want to know because I grew up that I grew up in a, a city where there's so many different people yeah. and there's so many different cultures and things that you that that come through New York. Mm-hmm. Okay. And growing up there, you learn about different cultures, different people, and you learn how to communicate with each one of them. Okay. So me, I try to do that and be a stand-up person when I do it. Yeah. Since I hey, you said you wanted the interview. Is he's getting the interview? Yeah. You know, because you're a good person. I see that you're a good person, yeah. so I try to give that good. I hope that I gave the good the good energy back to you as well, yeah, sure. so that you know you know what I mean. Yeah. So we don't have that. Is we don't have that everywhere. Yeah. People don't say, "Oh, I'm gonna be good to this person." They yeah. they look. It's so easy. I was told once that it is so easy to um, smile, yeah. but it takes more muscles in your face to frown yeah. and be. So I take that like, OK, it, it, it must right. take more yeah. um, energy to be nasty yeah. than it does to be good. Yeah. You know, and it's the same thing as a yeah. facial expression. So. That, that's the way I look at it. I said, oh, okay. I'm going to be good. Let me find out about that person. I would look in line when I first got over there. I would look in line and say, I'm going to ask her yeah. about this. Yeah. And I'm going to learn her sandwich and I'm going to learn what she gets. Yeah. And it, it, it became like a mental thing to me. Like, I need to know that person's sandwich. I need right, to know yeah. what's this. I need to know that. So that when they go through this line, they, can, they, know, they know that I genuinely cared about getting them 
what they wanted and they had a good experience coming through this one. Yeah. If yeah. not, then I, I don't, I don't want to be in this business. Right. Yeah. I don't want to be in the business if I can't make the person smile. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. You know, I got bad days. Every day isn't it? Yeah. I'm, I'm not doing that every day. Right. You know, stuff comes into play. Everybody yeah. has that day, but for the most part, I'm trying to be that person. Yeah. So I think that's really important, especially like you were talking about when people would look at each other in line and be like. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you? Why are you coughing? But mm -hmm. making that assumption about people makes you feel so alone because we mm -hmm. all felt so isolated. That's right. So and having you know, that interaction in public is all we got. <laughs> all we got. And you're like, oh, yeah, God. Like, this is coughing. Yeah. My mom, my mom <clears throat> is one of those big people that likes to talk to everybody at their grocery store. Mm -hmm. She'd be like, what the heck, you guys? Like, we're just trying to be friends here. We don't have to be best friends. That's right. We're just trying to get through it. Yeah. We're trying to get through it. Yeah. That's how I felt like. We're trying to get through this. You know? Yeah. Yeah. At some point, they can hit us with something else. Uh, it's going to be another variant. Right. I'm like, where are these variants coming from? What are they doing? They testing something else? And oh, it's a mess. Yep. It's a mess. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes, but... Oh, yeah, definitely. You say you want to take a picture of this? Yeah, I'm going to take a picture of that, but that is all the questions I have for you today. Thank okay. Thank you for doing the interview. I really okay. appreciate it. No problem. And